Hello everyone, welcome to What If Naruto Was Abandoned and Become a Chiha Dragon Emperor Part 4. Please go support Sith Trooper 09 for writing that awesome fanfic. Land of Snow. It had been a week since Naruto and Jurei arrived to the Leaf, completing the mission to bring back Tsunade Senju to heal the wounded and run the hospital. She got Kakashi and Sasuke to come out of their coma which was caused by a Manjikum ability called the Tsukiyomi, a Jinjutsu that manipulates one's perception of time to deal unreal amounts of torture, to the point a Jonin as powerful as Kakashi was left bedridden. After telling Kakashi of how Sasuke copied his Shidori, Kakashi was furious and reprimanded Sasuke by allowing him to do only D ranks until said otherwise. Sasuke, furious went to the civilian council to avoid punishment, and while the civilians, brainless idiots they are, demanded Kakashi's punishment be lifted, Minato shot down the council's plea. Sasuke wasn't happy at Naruto's new promotion to Jonin, and if what rumors from Jureya of the Sanin were true, he took on both Itachi and another s rank nin and nearly killed both. He was furious at Naruto's power while he was still weak. To add insult to the injury, Naruto had a Manjikum while he still had a Tutamo Sharingan. Menma and Mido too were furious since Itachi and his partner defeated them as if they were nothing. Kishina stepped up their training by teaching them how to break out of Jinjutsu to avoid having the Nine Tails be controlled by Itachi or Naruto. They accepted but refused to learn new Tujutsu styles other than the Uzumaki clans and other ninjutsu other than Rasengan. Currently, Naruto was watching the Princess Gale movies. A series of movies starring the actress Yuki Fujikas as Princess Gale. He, like many people, liked the movies and was watching it along with his genin teammates, Sasuke and Sakura. However, the enjoyment died as the loud screeches of the Izukazes interrupted the movies, showing how spoilt they were. Naruto and his teammates left the cinema to avoid angry civilians and shinobi from beating the crap out of the two Izukazes. TCH. Those idiots. Can't even have a minute of peace with those two rats. He grunted in annoyance. He jumped away as the Wadden Gate opened that also threw Sakura away and out came the actress, Yuki Fujikas riding a white horse, Chaz by Samurai. His team decided to go help the actress and to stop the Samurai from making any more damage. He flash stepped towards their position and kicked the one in front of Yuki and rendered him unconscious. He threw two shuriken at the other two and Yuki escaped. But that was a trap as it was actually Sakura in a transformation. He flash stepped towards the real Yuki Fujikas' position. Yuki sat down near the river depressed as her horse drank the water. She thought of her past and her tyrannical reign over her home country. You look pretty depressed right now. She turned her head and saw a teen, though she won't admit it, she did find him a bit handsome. Are you okay? He asked again. She got up her horse and left the area. You know she turned around and saw him run, keeping up with her horse, dot dot trying to outrun a ninja, especially one like me on a horse isn't such a bright idea. She didn't see where she was going and nearly crashed onto a couple of kids if it wasn't for Naruto who stopped the horse in time. She proceeded to make some drama over how useless having her autograph was and then ran away. Naruto shook his head in disappointment and just flash stepped to follow her in case those samurai were after her again. Next day, after a night of intense drama which stressed out Naruto who used all his girls to relieve the stress he found out via Kakashi that he was hired by her manager to protect her from enemies. Due to Sasuke being reprimanded and Sakura still not as strong as Kakashi wanted, both of them were to protect them. Naruto would have been excited cause he was a fan of the Princess Gale movies but now found it pretty much like a D-rank since the actress pretty much thinks her life sucks cause she's an actress. What does she know of a hard life? Naruto asked himself. You have got to be kidding me. He looked and saw Yuki was finally awake after he used a Jinjutsu to make her sleep after he had enough of her bullshit. Look who's finally awake. I don't think I can handle this. Naruto said in annoyance as he looked at her sad face while well, the crew applies makeup on her. Um? Oh come on, Izuna. You swore to protect her, it's part of a shinobi's duty. Besides, the mission is an air rank and the pay is pretty good. Replied Kakashi as he looked up from his book, then back to reading it again. As if protecting a pampered actress is worth any damn air rank. He just said and looked at the vast blue ocean. He saw her acting skills and was actually amazed at her talent. It was like looking at two different people, but he face faulted at her asking for eye drops since she couldn't cry. Next day, Mr. IDK named the men woke up and found this blocking our way sir, and we can't get through shouted one of the crew. This is it, huh? You moron we're standing on the perfect spot to shoot. It's practically begging us to shoot here, ha. Huh. Cherish this moment, the movie gods are smiling down on us, everyone prepare to embark. Once the crew, casts and the two leaf jonin landed, the shooting for the next scenes of the movie started. Just as the shooting started, Kakashi threw an explosive tag near the surrounding ice hills. Is this part of the scene? Asked the actor playing the villain. Hey what gives shouted the director, demanding an answer as to why they interrupted the shooting. Welcome friend, to the land of snow. Said one of the enemy nin. Nataroga said Kakashi, still remembering that mission years ago. Greetings Princess Koyuki. 
I still hope you still carry around the hex crystal. Said another of the enemy nin who was a woman with pinkish hair. Ugh Princess Koyuki? Asked Kakashi as he looked at Yuki. Surrender the princess to us, Kakashi, and then we might let you live. Said Roga, trying the easy way out, and the two members of his team came out of their hiding places. Naruto just walked a few steps forward. How about you shut up and leave us instead? He sarcastically asked, but he wanted to fight some strong enemies to get rid of his annoyance of the now-revealed real princess. Oh? It seems we have a brave kid from the Hidden Leaf, and not a bad-looking one either. Said the only female one of the group as she looked at Naruto with an evil gleam and a grin to match. Izuna, protect Yuki at all cost. Everyone get back to the ship shouted Kakashi and leapt up to face Roga. Yuki, Mizur, you take the princess. Kakashi is mine. Said Roga as he too leapt down to face Kakashi. Mizur put down his sled and charged towards Naruto who threw two kunai, but strangely they were repelled back. What? He thought before avoiding Mizur and when he came back, jumped kicked him in the face. So Tajutsu can work a eh? Ice style. Tsubam blizzard. He turned around and saw Fubuki launch a couple of ice birds at him. He avoided before holding up a tiger seal, mere parlor tricks compared to me. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. And the fireball incinerated the birds. He looked and saw the crew still there, making him quite angry. Didn't you hear Kakashi sensei? Go back to ship all of you now and they ran, except Yuki. Yuki get back to the ship but she still didn't respond. Ice prison. He jumped back up to avoid the pillars of ice before unleashing fire style. Majestic demolisher flame on the ice but grunted in disappointment at not being able to kill Fubuki. Keep the camera rolling even if it costs you your life show the world the resolve of a cinematographer shouted the director, not caring if here his crew will die, but just the action. The Kashi landed besides Naruto. There's something about their armor, yeah. It's the chakra armor the people here made. Chakra armor, it is but it's much stronger than before, so you remember. The two leaf jonin look to see Roga explain the armor. The chakra armor increases the wearer's chakra while strengthening a handful of the more useful jutsu. A chakra barrier surrounds us that repels our enemy's attack, thus making ninjutsu and jinjutsu practically useless. Chakra armor, eh? I wonder if my Narada can absorb it. Thought Naruto and the chance to prove his theory came in an instant as Mizur was sliding back to capture Yuki. Naruto cut the web-like things Mizur shot out from his gauntlet and then charged straight at Mizur. Naruto flash stepped out of sight, greatly surprising and confusing the onlookers. Where is he? Where's Thiaya? He was stabbed in the back by Narada covered with lightning chakra. Naruto pulled out the sword, and Mizur fell to the ground, dead. Mizur I'll kill you ice style. Ice prison and multiple pillars of ice came and trapped Naruto. Fubuki smirked thinking she got Naruto, but he unleashed Susanoo's chakra, detroying the ice, and held out his palm, blue chakra forming. Zero was all he said as he unleashed the attack and killed Fubuki. What is he, what kind of a monster are you leaf ninja training ask a scared Roga. Kakashi was enough, but here came a kid who killed his two teammates with ease. He's an Achiha. Not just any Achiha, but he is Azuna Achiha, the descendant of Madara Achiha himself. Replied Kakashi, and that was all it took for Roga to retreat. I expected more from them. Said Naruto in a disappointed tone. Well, they'll come back with more men soon, Azuna, bud. I hope they can provide a good dance cause this is getting boring. Was all Naruto said and he walked back. Kakashi was a bit concerned that his student had a hunger to battle strong opponents and a very obvious lack for concern of life. Yuki, Sandeu and the crew were shocked to see that a mere 14-year-old could kill without mercy, while the director was cackling madly at getting good scenes. Dodo's castle, you let them get away, you couldn't even catch my niece nearly shouted Dodo Kazuhana in rage at the shinobi before him who squirmed in shame. Forgive me Lord Dodo. Kakashi was enough on his own, but the death of my teammates made it impossible for me to do it, alone. Furthermore, is the fact that other leaf nin that accompanied him is Izuna Chiha, the only remaining living descendant of Madara Chihiroga, exclaimed the name in fear. Even nearly a century since his death, Madara's power was still known, to the point a mere mention of his name was enough to scare some. Hearing the name, Dodo felt a shiver crawl up his spine, but an opportunity presented itself. I understand. Since we know where they are, we can strike and take my niece, but the Achiha, his eyes will prove to be useful later on. He said with an evil grin. The Kashi had an implanted Sharingan and was feared all over the world for it. But the Achiha was a true inheritor of the famed eyes, and being of Madara's blood, his eyes would prove to be extremely powerful. He sat down and looked outside the window at the frost-covered mountains and snow-filled trees. Beside him was the newest copy of the bingo book, and in them was Naruto, who gained a bounty of over 70 million ryo from sand, waterfall, sound and stone, for killing over a thousand nin in their invasion of the leaf. Naruto's bingo book entry, name? Izuna Cheha, country, land of fire, hidden village, hidden leaf village, rank, A, the jutsu, 4.5, ninjutsu, 5, ninjutsu, 5, sex, 
Male, birth date. 7th August. Chakra affinity. Lightning, wind, fire and water. Height. 5'6". Weight. 54 kgs. Hair. Black with bits of blue. Bloodline. Sharingan. Bounty. 70 million. Wanted by. Hidden sound. Hidden waterfall. Hidden sand and hidden stone. Wanted for. Killing over one and a half thousand ninja of three minor villages and two major villages. Odo looked out at the snowy fields of his country. Soon, his niece would be captured, and the invention of his brother would be his and as a bonus, the Sharingan of the descendant of the second strongest ninja to have ever lived. With our main cast, you find anything? Asked Naruto to his sensei Kakashi. He was sitting down and enjoying a bowl of soup, along with Laserbeak. Yeah. Her real name is Koyuki Kazuhana, daughter of the previous ruler before her uncle killed him and took control. Replied Kakashi. So next time we may face an entire army if Dodo is that desperate. I might have to use it. Naruto said, putting emphasis on the it to tell Kakashi what he meant and he understood. Naruto meant his eternal Manjikum Sharingan, and for a minor village like the Hidden Snow, it was overkill. Yeah, you may have to. Hey, pass me on some of that. It looks good. He said, pointing at the soup. Sure. He said and just before he passed Kakashi the soup, the voice of their client, Sandeu interrupted them. Princess Koyuki is missing she has ran away. Damn it. Said Naruto and the two leaf nin came out of the vehicle. Izuna, let's fan out. Radio me if you find her and I'll do too. Got it, understood. Naruto said and Flash stepped away. He called Laserbeak to find Koyuki's scent and he did. Laserbeak pointed to her position and he disappeared in a flash step. Koyuki, who just fell onto the snow, heard the noise of something she hadn't heard before. She looked up and saw Naruto six feet in front of her, arms folded, and whether his face was angry or just disappointed, she didn't know. I'm disappointed in you, princess. He said in a cold and harsh tone. He pushed a button on his left shoulder, which was the button to the radio piece he had. Sensei, I found her. I'll be bringing her back to convoys, over and out. Come on. He said, trying to tell her to stand but she wouldn't budge. Getting fed up of her, he unsheathed Narada and pointed it at her. I said come on. Move it he commanded with his Sharingan active. Go ahead do it strike me down she said, nearly screaming at him. We both you wanted to do it since Andeu hired you leaf ninja. It saves me the trouble of acting in those movies and ruling this place. TCH. Don't tempt me princess. I will do worse, a lot worse with my eyes than any sword on you to the point that you'll practically beg me to kill you. And if I did, I can just say Snow Ninja killed you on your dear uncle's orders, and no one will dispute me of that fact. Or you can just let me and Kakashi Sensei do our job and actually protecting you and killing your uncle in the process. He sheathed Narada back and added, Are you so much of a coward that you'll hide away your shame with acting? Your father must be disappointed in you. Your face says everything, your makeup can't hide anything from my eyes. What do you know about suffering she shouted, as real tears came rolling down her cheeks. What do you know about losing someone close to you, and Naruto looked at her like she was an idiot. I know plenty, far more than you. He said, shocking her greatly. I lost my mother two months after she gave birth to me, because a giant nine-tailed fox the size of a mountain attacked the village. When I was seven, my brother and clan was slaughtered by a man whom I looked up to and loved like a brother. She was shocked but felt ashamed that she was like this, while well, the teen suffered far worse than she imagined. He killed everyone. Not just the men but the women and children. He hated my clan like we were animals, and he slaughtered them like animals. He put a jinjutsu on me, a powerful one too, that made me relive him killing everyone who cared for me, my brother, my godmother, everyone for 72 fucking straight hours, and the village has looked at me as nothing more than a disposable tool for their money, power and gains, so don't you dare tell me what I know about suffering. She wanted to apologize, but he threatened her that he'll kill her. He put her on his back and walked back up, with a few flash steps here and there, but since she was a regular civilian, he had to limit his steps. As they arrived at a tunnel which had quite a dull light in it. Koyuki told him it was train tracks made during her father's years that ran on the lesser cold days of the land of snow. Speaking of the devil, the very same train they spoke of made its way, running towards them in great speed. Naruto ran as fast as he could, but the train was quite fast and catching up. We'll never make it the train is too fast she said, terrified at being reunited with her uncle, and the train wasn't helping as it was getting closer by each passing second. Oh ye of little faith. Hold on tight or you'll puke out your intestines. But Koyuki shouted, hoping what he said wasn't true. Just hold on tight damn it, and once she did, he flash stepped out of the tunnel quickly, and Koyuki jumped down to the ground and went to puke out her breakfast at a nearby tree. Luckily, she didn't puke out her intestines so that was good news. After that, she instantly jumped on Naruto, hugging him to the point of nearly cracking his ribs, all the while kissing him and repeatedly saying thank you. Yo Izuna, he looked up and saw his sensei and the film crew with a small army of rebels brought on by Sandeu. He grabbed Koyuki and flash stepped to their position. It's been a long time, Koyuki. 
came a voice from the train all too familiar to Koyuki and the natives of Snow Country. It belonged to Dodo Kazuhana, and he appeared out of the train along with Nataroga. It's been 10 years now. Come on, don't be shy. Let's take a look at that face. Logs came rushing down the mountain slopes, hitting the train sides. The attack came from Sandeu and the Snow Rebels. There you have it men our beloved Princess Koyuki is back to watch over us. Victory is ours declared Sandeu, and the men cheered at the chance to end Dodo's tyranny for good. Hear me Dodo, we've waited a long time for this day of reckoning. I, Sandeu Asada and 51 warriors stand before you to avenge our great fallen leader, Lord Sasetsu. On this day, you will breathe no more. I thought you took care of the last insurgents. Said Dodo to Natter. My apologies. We'll get rid of them right away. Said Natter, but Dodo denied the order. No. With men such as these, there is little they can understand about total annihilation. Contact the airship. Tell them we have a special guest aside from myself. Dodo simply said and pressed a button, and the sides of the train revealed arrow cannons that would shoot arrows at high speeds against them. Should I'll have to use it he thought as he activated his eternal magicum. The arrows were shot at such high speeds everyone would be killed in a few seconds. Dodo started laughing like a madman, but he stopped as all the arrows stopped before a black wind. What? Who could do thy ha? Huh? He got his answer as he looked at Naruto with a dark blue chakra around him and a ribsage structure protecting him and Koyuki. Izuna your eyes. Koyuki said as she looked at Naruto's eyes which changed shape to that of an eight-pointed star with a shuriken in the middle. She saw the symbol in the right eye glowing and began to spin. Thujin. Barrier reflect. He said and the arrows were sent back to the train, killing the men who operated the machinery. Dodo and Roga escaped just in time, but they won't be alive for long. Both of Naruto's eyes started to glow an unholy red, and the ribsage became a full skeleton. Koyuki started shaking in fear at the chakra avatar and crawled back. WH what is that? She asked Kakashi, still a bit afraid. Did you see Izuna's eyes change? He asked to which she fearfully nodded. It is called the Manjikam Sharingan. It is the next stage of the Sharingan, the Ichiha clan's eyes, and this is their ultimate power, the Susanoo. He explained. The Susanoo gave a loud, demonic roar that scared everyone to the core. The Susanoo clasped its skeletal hands together, and Chakra Magatama started forming on the palms. Isaka Magatama Barrage. Naruto named the attack to everyone and unleashed them on the train, destroying the train in the blink of an eye. Incredible thought Koyuki at seeing the attack. Maybe things were starting to be good for her in the future. But her hopes were shattered as Roga grabbed her and jumped up to catch a ladder. Amit Naruto cursed at letting hit guard down, that led to Koyuki being kidnapped. In the sky above, a massive airship that proved rumors of Snow Country's advanced technology were true, and the hidden cloud being the most advanced place was debunked. Ah fools did you think that the train was my only ace up the sleeve. Now, with Koyuki by my side, I will get my brother's invention and become truly unstoppable he declared as he took the necklace from a struggling Koyuki. Amit wait is that. Said Kakashi as he looked at Izuna fly towards the airship by manifesting the wings of his dragon armor. I better get paid extra for this. He thought and would demand higher for all the shit he had to endure in these two days and have a night with his girls to relieve the stress. All of them. Airship. Naruto used Master Chen's teachings on his secret to jutsu art and was using a bit of his chakra to make himself invisible. He climbed aboard the behemoth of a vehicle and made it inside. Once inside, he took a moment to record and photograph the mechanics of the ship. It was very impressive, but the mission came first and picking up on Koyuki's signature, he flash stepped to her position. I must say my niece, you impress me. To be honest, I expected you to die as easily as your father did, but you actually acquired the skills needed to hide from me for a very long time and delay your ultimate fate of death. Say Dodo, grinning as he held up the necklace that had been on her person for the last 10 years. It shows how pathetic you are, uncle. You couldn't even find a little girl or get my dad's possession on your own. She said, trying to squirm her way out of the guard's grip, but to no avail. You should consider yourself yourself lucky. I could easily strike you down right here, right now like I did your father my sweet Koyuki. But I want you to witness as I use your father's invention and activate it using this jewel and bring about my complete control over Snow Country. He declared and enjoyed her terrified face. He founded the device but needed the key which was the necklace on her neck. Now, he can finally activate it. How about you shut up and go drive a sword through your chest before I do much worse? And everyone turned to see Naruto walk in the room. You exclaimed Roga in fear at the killer of his two teammates. What are you doing here? How did you get on board the ship? He asked, putting a kunai near Koyuki's throat. You opened the door and I came in by means I won't explain. Now hand over the princess. He said, taking a step forward. Stay back at Chihara dot dot or I'll kill the princess. Naruto looked at him with his Sharingan active and threw a needle at Roga's hand, making him drop the knife. Naruto used Rage and Chakra to decapitate the guards, and Koyuki came running towards him. 
After that, he threw a kunai at Roga's throat, killing him slowly and painfully. Bard screamed Dodo kill them kill them now. Laserbeak. Naruto whispered and Laserbeak flew off his neck and incinerating the guards with its fire. After Laserbeak flew towards Koyuki, apparently lacking her scent, he transformed into a necklace around her neck. Wind style. Great breakthrough. And Naruto shot a gust of wind towards Dodo who fell back, hit his head on the wall and losing consciousness. Naruto grabbed Koyuki and ran towards the door of the airship. He kicked it down and Koyuki, scared of how high they were, hugged him tighter. It's too high. We will die if we jump down she exclaimed. No amount of snow could cushion their fall, and while Naruto was strong, even he can't do it. Do you have such low faith in me? I'm actually hurt. He said and activated his dragon armor, with his wings appear behind him. Hold on tight. He jumped down and glided towards the ground. He had to use chakra to shield his ears from her screams of fear. He landed on the ground and dropped her there. After that, he activated his Susanoo. Susanoo Ragin. Wrathful arrows of the heavenly skies and fired red Ragin arrows at the airship, destroying it and killing Dodo. No screamed Koyuki. Dodo had my necklace I can't see my father's invention now. No need to worry. The jewel on your neck was a fake. A fake? She gasped out. Yeah. Kakashi sensei was here before. He swapped a real one with a fake in case Dodo captured you. Now come on, let's get back to the convoys. Several days later, the celebrations to Princess Koyuki's return to Snow Country and her becoming the new daimyo was underway. Her father's device, which was a machine to melt the snow and allow spring to finally happen in the country was discovered, and with it activated, the country was renamed to Spring Country. Naruto was named an honorary citizen of Spring Country since he killed Dodo, and was nicknamed the Knight of Spring. Naruto also got two additional gifts. First was a special chakra armor made for him with a design similar to his samurai armor, and the second was a special autograph of a naked Koyuki posing on a bed, with the words to my dear Izuna-kun, my knight of spring, if you are tired of the missions in your village, come by here soon, and I'll give you my version of royal hospitality. Naruto got what every man wished and dreamed for, and he loved it. With a new trade alliance to fire country and a new chakra armor, his future was going well and bright. Sasuke Tribal Mission. Location. Village hidden in the sand Sunagakur no Sado. The hidden sand was bursting in activity. The civilians doing their best to help in food production and water harvesting all the while the ninja of the village were doing missions, now that the previous daimyo was replaced with a sand-friendly one. Cheers and celebrations were heard in the streets, as today marked the day the fifth Kazakiage of the sand would take his position in office. The people gathered around the Kazakiage tower, the tallest building in the village where the Kazakiage would be in. On top of the building was a man in robes with a green cage hat, and on the back of his robes were the kanji for 5th Kazakiage. The man pulled down his hat to reveal he had two red markings on his cheeks and a turban on his head that covered the left side of his face. His name was Baki, sensei to the sand siblings, and now the 5th Kazakiage of the sand. People of the village hidden in the sand he began his speech to those below, dot dot I talk to you today with a heavy heart. I know the memory of our dead loved ones is still fresh, and the pain of the foolish failed invasion caused by my former predecessor is still in our hearts. At that, many people looked down in guilt. The sand had lost over 10,000 ninja, all jonin level in the failed invasion, among them Tamari and Gara. But. He yelled, getting them all to look up, dot dot let us not dwell on the past, but focus instead on the future, with our captured secrets and few injutsu seals from the leaf, our ninja will be much stronger than before, and with our new alliance with Atsuchikij and the hidden stone, we will get our revenge, one way or the other. During the invasion, the hidden sand managed to loot the leaf's library of ninjutsu, tojutsu, jinjutsu and more, along with better sealing formulas, a few even those of Uzumaki origin. With all these and the stone promising to send instructors to help train their newly graduated ninja, the Sans ninja were going to be much stronger than their previous generations. I promise you that, as your new fifth Kazakiage he said, and the people cheered for the new Kazakiage and hoped the Sans future would be bright. Hidden Leaf. A week had passed since the mission to the now newly named Spring Country. After lifting Sasuke's punishment and seeing Sakura was as strong as she was needed, he allowed them to go with a B-rank mission, along with Niji Hayuga, under the leadership of Junin Shikamarinara. The reason Kakashi or Guy weren't there with them was because word reached the leaf via Jiraiya's spy network that the hidden waterfall was planning to mount a secret attack on the leaf, with help from over 600 sound ninja, hidden cloud who wanted a Hayuga in their village and rogue grass ninja. The plan was to construct a railway from cloud through rice country then waterfall country to transport the cloud village's mega chakra cannon that had more power than the eight tails tailed beast bomb. Interestingly, a short civil war that lasted for about a day and a half which saw the old government ousted and a new one came into power. 
strangely enough, reports said that the winners of the war were those of an opposition party, with support from people with enough power, men and resources to topple one of the great. Due to the impending attack, all Joan and level shinobi of the Leaf were called to decimate the invading forces near the border of Fire Country and Lightning Country. The Leaf Nin were able to repel the invaders, killing over 3,000 of them in a day. Naruto used his Susanoo to decimate the invaders' bunkers, and with rage and arrows, the invaders retreated back to their countries. Because of his accomplishment, Minato awarded Naruto with the highest ranked medals. Sasuke and the two Yuzukazes were furious and even more jealous of Naruto. It was nighttime in the Leaf Village. Currently, Sasuke was training in one of the training grounds of the Leaf. He punched the dummy furiously as he remembered Naruto's accomplishments. Wave, T, Chunin exams, the invasion, against Itachi, Spring Country and now the failed assault of the Leaf by Waterfall, Grass Renegades, Sound and Cloud Villages. He saw Naruto receiving the honorary medals for his services. He gritted his teeth and in a fit of rage, punched the dummy multiple times and kicked it, effectively destroying it. I know you're there. Come out he said as he felt four unknown signatures near him. And in an instant, four figures dropped down. I won't ask again, who are you and what do you want with me? I don't know why Lord Orochimaru wants with this guy. Said one of them with dark gray hair that covered his right eye and had a green shade of lipstick on him. We aren't here to answer your questions, shithead said the female with red hair. Let's just get this over with. Said the tall one with orange hair in a mohawk style. I'll ask again, who are you? Sasuke said in a warning tone with his Sharingan active. I'm Seiken of the West Gate, Hirobo of the South Gate, AI of the North Gate, shithead. And I'm Kitamaru of the East Gate and we are the Sound 4, Lord Orochimaru's elite bodyguards. And we have a proposal for you. Said Kitamaru. Let's hear it. Replied Sasuke. You can come with us where we'll escort you to the Hidden Sound. There, Lord Orochimaru will give you all the power you'll ever need, or you can stay and play ninja with your friends here. Said Kitamaru and Sasuke had an evil grin. The leaf wasn't doing everything in its power to make him stronger, all the while Naruto, despite bonding together, he still viewed him as a lower Ichiha, was getting stronger and stronger. There is nothing to think about. When do we leave? He asked. Meet us at the north gate in an hour. Don't be late or we'll leave without you. Replied Seiken and the sound four vanished in a blur. Sasuke left the area and went back home to pack his things. It was time he left the leaf for greener pastures. Thirty minutes later, Sasuke walked through the streets of the leaf, and most homes and shops were closed as it was late at night. As he walked down the streets, he saw Sakura in front of him, but he didn't stop and continued walking. Sasuke-kun, wait Sakura shouted for her teammate in crush. What are you doing so late at night, Sakura? Go home go back to sleep. He simply said. You're leaving the village, aren't you? She asked. And is that all you have to say? After everything we've been through, I told you before, you don't understand me. He said and turned around to face her. You don't know what it's like to lose your family, and the one to do it is your own brother. I am an Avenger power is the only thing I need, and I can't be delayed by some silly crush. We had good times. As a team you're going to throw it all away, just for revenge. We aren't the same, Sakura. I am nothing like you. I won't stop until I completed my quest. He said and disappeared in a blur. In an instant, he sliced Sakura's throat. Sakura tried saying something, but only a bloody gurgle escaped her mouth, and she fell to the ground, dead. I'm sorry Sakura. Sasuke said in a weak voice as tears rolled down his face. He killed the only girl he got to know personally and would have taken as his wife. His Sharingan evolved, first having a third Tomo and then, the Tomo merged to form a six-star shape, the color red with a black background, as opposed to the regular Sharingan. Now that I killed the person I cared for and got these eyes, I'll kill you Nai-san he said and went to the village gate. Next day, it was 7.45 in the morning, and near a waterfall in the Naka River of the Hidden Leaf, was Naruto meditating under the waterfall. Training his dragon sage mode and armor was good if there was water nearby, at least it was what he thought. He was getting stronger. He estimated he was at least high jonin to low cage level right now. In two and a half years, he'd be powerful enough to kill Itachi if he kept his growth like this. With him possessing the most powerful Sharingan due to him being the Achiha Prince, with weapons like the fabled Narada and Gunbai, Dragon Summons and Chakra Armor, he was getting there soon enough. But his thoughts and meditation were interrupted when an Anbu appeared before him. Yonin Azuna Achiha, you are to report to the Hokage's office as soon as you can. It's an emergency. And left. He used a wind jutsu to dry himself quickly. He put on his boots, then his shirt and wore cloak and flash stepped to the office. Hokage's office, you wanted to see me? He asked as he appeared before the Hokage and his unknown father. Yes. Early in the morning, we found the dead body of Sakura Hirono. At this, Naruto's eyes widened in shock. Why is she dead? Someone slit her throat. Through the Yamanaka mind tests, we found out the killer was none other than Sasuke Chiha himself. Why would Sasuke do this? 
He asked loudly, shocked that it was Sasuke of all people who killed Sakura. Again the Manjikam. We found out he defected from the leaf and left to join Orochimaru. And since you're only Jonin available, your mission is to bring back Sasuke Chiha to the leaf where he'll face trial, understood. Naruto said and was ready to flash step away. You can take any Genin or Chunin you want for the mission. Minato added. With all due respect, Lord Forth, I am more than enough. And left in a flash step. Be careful Naruto, my son. Were Minato's thoughts as he hoped Naruto would be safe. The sound four were dashing through fire country as one of their members, Jirobo, carried a box which carried Sasuke, who was advancing his curse seal to the second stage. We're being tracked by a leaf shinobi. His speed is insane. He'll arrive in a few minutes. Kitamaru said with a small spider in one of his palms, as if talking to him. Why don't we just stop and kill him? Teiya asked. We can't. He is Azuna Che. He managed to last against Lord Orochimaru and killed a Jinchuriki. If his bingo book status is true, we don't stand a chance. He replied. Just fucking great. Teiya sarcastically added. Language Teiya. Said Jirobo still carrying Sasuke in the barrel. Crash. The sound four looked to see Naruto in front of them, wearing a black Senju style armor and an evil dark blue chakra around him. The sound four were shocked to feel it since not even Orochimaru's was as dark as his. I'll say this once Naruto turned around to face them dot dot, surrender Sasuke Chiha to me, and I'll let you live, no. We aren't surrendering Lord Orochimaru's future vessel. Besides, he would just kill us anyways. Replied Kitamaru as he and the Sound Four prepared for battle with their curse marks activated. Vessel? So the interrogation reports were true after all. He mused, remembering the torture and interrogation of several Sound Ninja. Well, since you're not giving him up, I hope you can dance well. He said and disappeared in a flash step. Where is he? Said Seiken in fear. Show yourself shithead shouted Teiya. Ajirobo was punched in the stomach and was sent flying away. He flash stepped behind Teiya, who had no time to react, and threw her at Kitamaru, and avoided a punch from Seiken, and proceeded to palm him in the stomach. He pulled out his gun by to avoid a punch from Jirobo, who was in his curse seal second stage. Reflection. He said and sent Jirobo flying away. Aya tried using her flute Jinjutsu on Naruto, but the combo of Narada and his chakra armor made it just the music of a flute. He avoided spider web arrows fired by Kitamaru and kicked a transformed Seiken in the back and made a horse sign. Higher style. Majestic demolisher flame. He said and roasted Seiken to death. He saw his twin, Yukin, become enraged at his twin's death and charged at Naruto, but he simply struck him in the neck and decapitated him. He activated his Susanoo ribsage which shielded him from Kitamaru's web arrow. He pointed a finger at him and muttered Siro before killing him. He used Sujin to trap Jirobo in a water dragon and then Rajin to electrocute him to death. All that was left was Teiya, who was terrified and tried running away, but he caught her. Kodamatsukami. He said and in a single glance, made her his slave. After that, she bowed down in front of him and awaited his commands. Good. Go take the barrel and we'll head back to the leaf. Yes, my master. She said submissively and moved to take Sasuke, but a knife made of bone stopped her. Greater shouted the albino man who threw the bone. Hey Aya, my new slave, who is he? Another one of Orochimaru's loyal dogs. He asked his new slave to which she nodded. Yes my master. His name is Kamimuro Kagaya, and he's Orochimaru's most powerful and loyal follower after Kabuto. He would stoop so low as to use a hypnosis on her. It doesn't matter, I'll weaken you severally and take you and Sasuke Chiha to be Lord Orochimaru's next vessels. Said Kamimuro as he pulled out a bone knife. HMPH. As if serving a criminal and mad scientist like Orochimaru is any better. He replied sarcastically, causing his new slave to snicker. How dare you insult Lord Orochimaru Kamimuro yelled and jumped down to attack Naruto, and he replied in kind by attacking with Narada. The Aya protects Sasuke's barrel, yes master. She replied and took a defensive position near Sasuke's barrel. Kamimuro jumped back and shot multiple bone bullets at Naruto who swung his Narada and got the bones. Using his chakra, he shot the bones back, but Kamimuro dodged them all. Fire style. Dragon flame caterwaul. And he spat out five fanged fish burned the forest below, but didn't hit Kamimuro. Naruto saw Kamimuro came at him with bones all over his body and strike him with multiple bone blades on his arms. Naruto activated Susanoo's ribsage and the bones broke. Kamimuro jumped back to avoid a Siro at him and Naruto activated his dragon armor and flash stepped towards Kamimuro. Kamimuro's bones proved to be useless against the dragon armor as Naruto gave him an uppercut, then a clawed slap him. Naruto gave him a punch to his stomach which destroyed his ribsage armor and kicked him away. Naruto fired another Siro, but Kamimuro jumped away in time to avoid the blast. Boom. Naruto saw Sasuke's barrel explode, which caused Teiya to fly away, with dark blue hair, dark brown skin with two hand-like wings and a four-star shape on his nose. Sasuke Chia. 
Naruto began, gaining his attention, for the murder of Sakura Haruno, you are under arrest and is ordered back to the leaf to face trial, she served her purpose. He said, showing him his manjikam. It disgusted Naruto that Sasuke did it the same way as Itachi did, killing those precious to them. Now, I can test it on you, dope who are you? He asked as he just saw Kamimuro. My name is Kamimuro, faithful servant of Lord Orochimaru sent here to ensure your safe journey to sound, Sasuke. Replied Kamimuro. Good. We can go to sound later. First, we kill the loser and take his weapons and eyes, Sasuke roared as his left eye bled and unleashed black flames on Naruto. Naruto used Susanoo to block the attack and used Fujin to send a gust of wind that made Sasuke fly back. Kamimuro tried attacking him, but a punch from Susanoo stopped him. Sasu charged at Chidori and headed straight for Naruto, but he made Rage and Blade, and the two Jutsu met. After a few seconds, Naruto's Rage and Blade won out, and he dealt several punches that knocked out Sasuke and deactivated his curse seal. He sealed Sasuke in a scroll and made his way towards Teaya, ready to leave, but he sensed Kamimura was still alive. Is he always like this? He asked his new slave to which she shook her head no. No master. He is suffering from an illness that is slowly killing him. He shouldn't even be able to walk, much less stand. He's probably doing this as a last mission to prove himself to Orochimaru. You're brave and persistent, I'll give you that much Kimi. He said to Kamimuro, praising him since he felt he deserved it. But I'm gonna end your suffering right here. This jutsu was created for killing Itachi, but that failed, but it's still powerful regardless, so find joy that I'm using it on you. He unsheathed Narada and put his two fingers on the blade, drawing blood. He put his hands in the seal for the powerful jutsu he was about to use. Ran Ray Siro. He said and unleashed the ray of light on Kamimuro, killing him in the blink of an eye and causing a huge explosion. Let's go back to the village where we'll get this disgrace to trial and get you to meet your new sisters, shall we? He asked Teaya to which she happily nodded. Led prison. Naruto was in the forest near the village. The mission was successful as Sasuke was captured, currently sealed in a storage scroll, and with a new tool in the form of one of Orochimaru's sound for Teaya. Teaya he got his slave's attention and took out his ring which was made of obsidian and had a blue diamond in the center, dot dot take this. It has a formula that will allow you to enter my manor in the Ichiha district since the security seals don't recognize you yet. Once you enter, you'll meet your sisters and tell them to start packing for a two and a half year training trip. As you command, my master. Replied Teaya submissively as she took the ring and body flickered to the manor. After she left, Naruto walked towards the village gates and once he entered the gate, four Anbu appeared before him. Do you have the traitor? Asked one of the Anbu, to which Naruto nodded his head. Captured and sealed. He replied, showing them the scroll, and the Anbu looked at each other. Very well then. Spoke another Anbu. Lord Forth has called an emergency council since you sent a message that you'll be arriving shortly. We will escort you to the council chambers now. Very well then. Said Naruto, and they vanished to the council chambers where Sasuke would face his trial. Council chamber. Naruto entered the council chamber to see the fourth Hokage and his three advisors, alongside the clan heads and civilian council. He saw Mabuki Hirano was angry at Sasuke though given the fact that it was her daughter he killed, it was to be expected. The Anbu brought Sasuke, who had his hands cuffed and a collar on his neck which was attached to four sticks, which were used to bring prisoners for trial while torturing them. The collar had a seal which made the prisoner's ability to use chakra useless while in trial, and equipped with sharp brushes that made the skin itch terribly. The council meeting is now in session to determine the fate of Sasuke Chiha for the murder of Sakura Haruno. Came Minato's voice and he would have continued had it not been for Sasuke shouting in defiance. I am the next head of the Achiha clan, so what if I killed her for more power, huh, I can do whatever I want if it may a grh he grunted in pain as one of the Anbu punched him in the stomach. Be silent, Achiha. You will speak when given permission to. Said the Anbu in a dangerous tone. Thank you Anbu. Now then, do you have anything else to say? Minato asked, but no response came from Sasuke. Very well, let's wrap this up now. I call for the immediate execution of Sasuke Achiha. You can't do this to me, I am the last Achiha Sasuke roared out in defiance, only to get punched in the face again. You seem to be forgetting about Izuna here, Sasuke. Just because you are the next head doesn't make you the last Achiha, nor does it make Naruto a non-Achiha. Now then, anyone who opposes the decision, I do Lord Hokage. Came Mabuki Haruno's reply. I think it is too merciful. I say we destroy his chakra network, thereby destroying his chakra molding capabilities and his ability to use the Sharingan. I want him to know that he will never achieve his goal of killing his older brother. She said with a sick smile that sent shivers down the men in the room. I don't see why not. All in favor? He asked and everyone raised their hands except Anzo, but no one gave two shits about him. Okay then. Hiashi, will you do the homers of blocking Sasuke's chakra points? Asked Minato to which Hiashi nodded. Of course. 
said Hiashi and got out of his seat, Ayakugan activated and ready to block all of the 361 chakra points in Sasuke. Though it wouldn't permanently block his chakra, it would block it long enough for either Minato or Kishina to make a seal that will take Sasuke's chakra away from him, forever. No stay back Sasuke screamed in fear and tried squirming, but the Anbu guards were too strong. In a few seconds span of time, Hiashi closed his chakra network and made Sasuke unconscious. Is his chakra blocked? Minato asked to which Hiashi nodded his head. Good. Izuna, you're dismissed and this meeting is agent, it didn't sound, Arachimaru was coughing heavily in his bed. His arms were in a pain far worse than it was before and what he originally imagined it would be. His sensei took the arm parts of his soul before his death and he hoped his old teammate Tsunade could heal them. But it was not to be as both Jiraiya and Naruto managed to convince Tsunade not to. He and Kabuto nearly died when the boss summon of the dragons, Bahamut, launched a zero at them. They managed to escape death though at a cost of his pride, since the memory of him running like a scared, screaming girl haunted him. And worse were the Chibi Tsunade, Jirei and Hiruzen he saw in his dreams, laughing at him. Lord Orochimaru, he heard the sounds of his right-hand man, Kabuto Yakushi, from outside his room. He could hear Kabuto running towards his room. Did the sound four finally arrive with Sasuke? Will he have his new vessel? Kabuto he called out his name, but Kabuto was still panting heavily. Probably exhausted. Did the sound four return with Sasuke-kun? No, Lord Orochimaru. Replied Kabuto while panting. What? Orochimaru nearly shouted. How would happen they should have arrived by now? I know, but Pant Pant the Leaf sent Izuna Chia to stop them. I even sent Kimimro as backup, but it seems Pant Pant young Izuna killed all five of them. Said Kabuto, still shocked and coming into terms with the fact that five of Orochimaru's strongest were killed by one person alone. But cough 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 so Izuna-kun killed them huh? What of Sasuke-kun? He asked, hoping Sasuke wasn't killed and his prayers were answered. Sasuke is still alive but locked away in a high security prison. His chakra is blocked and will most likely be in jail for all his life if the leaf doesn't have any further plans for him, replied Kabuto as he knew the leaf would most likely extract Sasuke's sperm granted if the curse seal didn't make him infertile to impregnate multiple women to give them new generations of Ichiha since Naruto was still young to be a father. Hmm, tonight Kabuto, you and a few of our best trained Anbu will go infiltrate the leaf and rescue Sasuke-kun. But for now cough cough cough, Lord Orochimaru bellowed Kabuto as he gave Orochimaru his strongest medicines. We have to do the transfer now or you won't live through tonight. Kabuto remarked, knowing that if they didn't do it now, his dreams for immortality would be lost forever. I know. Go and select one of our Chunin for the transfer, Kabuto cough cough he ordered, and Kabuto left to find the suitable vessel for the next three years. Until then, they'll have to save Sasu can't train him till he's a viable vessel. Hidden Leaf. It was late at night in the Hidden Leaf village. It was already past 11 and the village gates were closed and all the people were sleeping. But six people were still awake. In the secret room, deep within the village, guarded by the best of the Anbu Black Ops and these guards were of the foundation, were six people having an important meeting. These people were the fourth Hokage and his wife, Minato Namikaze and Kishina Yuzumaki, the three elders of the Leaf, Danzo Shimura, Hamura Mitakado and Kahari Yudatane, and last was Jiraiya of the legendary Sanin. Why were they having a meeting, you ask dear reader? Simple. As it turned out, Jiraiya received word from his spies that the overthrown old regime of the Hidden Grass along with their followers were elsewhere, and word reached Jiraiya of a weapon the old government of grass, called the Box of Paradise A.N. Or Bliss, whatever version you want to use capable of unknown but great destructive power, was going to be used by them to take control of the shinobi world. We can't allow those power-hungry bastards of some low-level, backwater village to control the shinobi world, came the crooked old voice of Kaharu, who would never accept a minor village like Grass, much less its ousted weak government, rule the world when the strongest village, the Leaf, couldn't. I agree. That is why I recommend we prepare plans to avoid such a thing from happening said Danzo, who agreed with Kahari's mentality of not allowing a minor village to rule the world. Where is the box of paradise located in any ways? Ask Minato to the spymaster of the leaf and his sensei, only for the answer to shock him. It is kept in the blood prison. Said Jurei with the rest of the people gasping in shock and becoming wide-eyed. We can't attack the blood prison. Not now anyway since it's too heavily fortified and most of our forces are still near the borders of earth, lightning and wind countries said Hamura, knowing with their forces in the leaf, who were inexperienced tune in their fresh genin, an attack on a place like the blood prison was suicide. I agree. What do we do instead then? Every minute we stand idly by, the former grass regime are getting closer to the box, roared Kaharu who wished their jonin and Anbu would return soon. All while this happened, Kishina was thinking fast. Her power-hungry mind calculating the best options for this. If the former grass regime won, all her power and influence would be gone and she couldn't have that and a light bulb lit in her mind. 
a brilliant and devilish plot that would make her more powerful as the leaf would expand its influence and kill Kiyomi's son. I know suddenly exclaimed Kishina, getting their attention. How about we send one of our to the prison? They can weaken it from inside while we get our forces ready for the attack, her idea was good. Send a powerful ninja of their rank to weaken the defenses all the while lessening their casualties. It was a good plan however, the question was who to send. It's a good plan, but who do we send? Ask Minato only to have a mini heart attack by his wife's suggestion. Yonin Izuna Che. Replied Kishina, but unknown to all of them, except Danzo since they share the same mentality, she had a different plan. By doing this, she would take Naruto's eyes and weapons and take them for herself while he would get killed in the prison. But Kishina you can't Minato tried reasoning, but it seems none of them share the same thought. I agree. Sending a jonin like Izuna Chiha would be most effective. He is already as strong as Kakashi Haddock without any of his less desirable traits. I say we go on with it. Remarked Danzo with his two teammates agreeing. Indeed. He is the most likely choice, but how will we do it? We can't just send an unsanctioned mission to infiltrate a place like the Blood Prison, nor can we just tell him to do it as an official mission. We need an excuse to do it. Said Kahara knowing that sending one of their nin, especially Naruto who was popular in three countries who provided huge economic boosts, wasn't a good idea. They needed something, a proof of the crime he did to justify why he was in the prison. How about we make up a story saying that he tried assassinating the wreckage when peace talks between the leaf and cloud. That way, we have a reason to send him to the prison without creating controversy among the populace and losing our three major trade partners. Said Kishina and the other three elders and Jiraiya nodding. She saw Minato still hesitant to do this, so she activated the slave and loyalty seal on Minato that her clan developed that made the Uzumaki clan notorious for their human trafficking. She put the seal on Minato after she knocked him out, and the seal forced him to break his relationship with Kiyomi Acheha. Fine then. Tomorrow, we will order the arrest of Izuna Acheha and send him to the blood prison. Said Minato with Kishina laughing like a madman in her mind, now that the last memory and legacy of her rival, Kiyomi was gonna be dead. The anti department in the maximum security holding cells was Sasuke Chia. He had his chakra sealed off entirely by Minato then thrown here in the prison. He was sure the leaf would extract his sperm to breed a new generation of the Achiha clan and toss him aside to a force work camp in the southern parts of Fire Country as a test subject for experimentations or simply, and his preferred fate, execution. My foolish little brother, he looked and saw Itachi in front of him with a cold smirk. You still lack the hate to kill me. You're still weak like the day I killed our parents and clan, foolish little brother, Itachi Sasuke screamed out but bumped his head at the cell. He put his hand on his sore forehead. He realized it was just a hallucination, a side effect of having his chakra sealed and body still adjusting to the new change. Bang bang bang, boy be quiet some of us are trying sleep here. Said a prisoner not far from him. If you're so sleepy then why don't you shut up, replied Sasuke in anger. Square up ye. Imma kiss your mom's bum, maybe have some tea after, ye. Replied the man and Sasuke seethed in anger. Why you, but he was interrupted as the same man was killed by those he could tell were of Anbu, but from a different village. They wore the sound forehead protector, and they started killing the other prisoners and Leaf Anbu to avoid being detected. Sasuke heard a noise on his cell bars and looked at the face of a man he thought he would never see again. Akabuto? Asked Sasuke as he saw the right hand man of Arachimaru and the traitor of the Leaf. What are you doing here? To rescue you of course. Kabuto replied as if it wasn't a big deal. Rescue me? Can Orochimaru destroy the seal on me? He asked desperately. Yes. Lord Orochimaru can destroy the seal on you and give you training. He replied and got Sasuke's door open. Now come on. Let's go before the leaf is aware of our actions. He said and put Sasuke on his back and body flickered away along with the sound team he brought. Next day, Naruto and his slaves finished packing for their two and a half year training trip. His plan was to travel around the elemental countries and train to get strong enough to kill Itachi on his own without outside interference. The Grand Ray Zero he developed proved to be useless against the Susanoo, even at a weakened skeleton form, but he had an idea for a jutsu that, in theory, should destroy a humanoid Susanoo. Since his Susanoo was stronger due to him using it more frequently, he could test it on his Susanoo to see if it was strong enough. Knock knock knock, he heard knocking sounds coming from the door. He walked over to it to see who it was. It was an Anbu. Why would the Hokage send an Anbu here? Did he have another messiah for him? Azuna Cheha, you are ordered by Lord Forth to appear before the council chambers, now. Said the Anbu and he body flickered away. Naruto didn't quite know what to say. Without much of a choice, he flash stepped to the council chambers. Council chambers, Naruto appeared before the council chambers in his usual flash step. Strangely, he saw that they were all dead serious right now. An oddity considering that the civilians and ninja would usually shout at each other. 
and with them were the only Anbu stationed in the leaf and several Chunins and Genins, including the Izukazas. You requested my presence. Naruto asked, to which Minato nodded. Yes. You see, the hidden cloud came with the Rakage yesterday to negotiate peace terms. Started Minato, dreading this decision he took. That's good and all, but why am I here? Asked Naruto confused. Was he assigned to guard the Rakage or something? Because it has everything to do with you, you bastard shouted Kashina, but a fist from Minato stopped her shouting. Why Kashina roared Minato but quickly compassed himself. As I was saying, you are here because the Rakage was attacked by you. Naruto couldn't believe his ears. Was this a lie? What? Impossible I wasn't at the place, wherever it is, to even begin with he shouted in anger at the fact that they could do this to him. Kashina was grinning madly. Since Naruto was going to be in prison, his property, bloodline and weapons would be taken from him and used by others. She would have her revenge on Kiyomi by this. As such said Minato in a tired voice. He regretted it, but the loyalty seal he knew nothing about forced him to. Your Sharingan, weapons and property will be seized. Bloodline and weapons will be given to my son and daughter, who are the only ones worthy of it, even more than you, and your lands and money will be given to the village as a whole. Menma and Mido grinned, and the Anbu were walking near Naruto to restrain him. So, this is it huh? After everything I did for you, Wave, T, the invasion, Spring and to bring Sasuke back, this is the thanks I get. False accusations and an imprisonment. He asked rhetorically. My children could have done the same on a much better scale you Uchiha scum screamed Kashina in rage. Very well then. Naruto activated his EMS, and Susanoo roared into life, crushing the two Anbu into paste. Rage in sharp spear he said, and pointed his left hand which was sparking with purple red lightning to form a spear. He killed Hiashi by hitting him dead center in the skull and a Kashina's shoulder. Kashina screamed louder than Sakura ever did, though given the fact that the lightning would ensure she could never be a ninja again, it was to be expected, and he smiled at her screams of pain. Naruto placed the clan heads and Minato in a Jinjutsu before preparing another Jutsu. He formed a second spear and in an instant, decapitated all of the civilian council, including Sakura's mother. Rasengan, he turned around to see Menma and Mido charge at him with a Rasengan in their hands, but couldn't even scratch the Susanoo. He used Fujin to throw them back, and his Susanoo grabbed them and proceeded to use them as a shield against incoming Jutsu from the Anbu. Fire style. Fire dragon flame bullet. He said and spat out a fire dragon that burned the Anbu to crisps. He threw Menma and Mido outside the wall and used Yusaka Magatama Barrage to level the building. Minato awoke just in time to teleport him, Kishina, and the clan heads out of the collapsing building. Danzo had used Izanagi and one of his hidden Sharingan to survive the attack. Naruto Flash stepped out of the building and made a shadow clone. Go and warn the girls. I'll hold them off as long as I can. Yes boss. The clone said and Flash stepped away. Naruto dodged a Chunin coming at him and killed by via sword swing. He killed two more Chunin with a fire jutsu before he came face to face with a real threat, Jiraiya, who came in his imperfect sage mode. So, even after I helped bring back the Senju, you still backstab me? He asked and Jiraiya looked indifferent. You did a crime, Azuna. You have to pay for your crime. Said Jiraiya as he hoped a powerless Naruto would prevent the prophecy and the shinobi system would continue on. You are nothing more than a backstabbing traitorous toad he shouted and activated his dragon armor. He flash stepped towards Jiraiya and gave him an uppercut and Jiraiya who had no time to react to the flash step. Jiraiya and Naruto started engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but due to Naruto's dragon armor, it proved difficult for Jiraiya to compete to Jutsu-wise, since despite his sage mode, toads were nothing compared to a dragon. Jiraiya jumped back and spew out oil on Naruto and lit him on fire. Too bad he didn't know Naruto's magicum ability called Kagetsuchi made fire attacks useless. Fire style is useless against me, Jiraiya. I thought someone as strong as you would know something like that. He simply teased. What? Ho ho how? Doesn't matter for you will be nothing more than a corpse after this day, Toad. Naruto set a fire to Siro. Jiraiya luckily dodged in time, and he flew up to avoid Tsunade's heavenly kick of pain. Naruto fired a wind jutsu, but it was repelled by Mido, who came charging in with a Rasengan. He simply beat at her black and blue and attached an exploding tag and threw her on the ground. The tag exploded and he punched Menma, who was in Nine Tails Chakra mode, in the left cheek, and sent him flying through a wall. Naruto knew his dragon mode was gonna wear out soon, and his chakra soon to be depleted. He needed to end this fast. He fired a Siro at a sage mode enhanced Rasengan from Jiraiya, and his Siro won. He used his wings to fly up and rain fire endless kunai down at the enemies below. He activated his Susanoo and advanced it to the humanoid stage and started killing the nearby Chunin. He used Susanoo Rage and Blade to attack Tsunade, but she managed to dodge it and kick the Susanoo. Naruto was shocked she could actually crack it, but he shot out a Fujin Wind Jutsu at her. He sensed Menma and Mido near him, both preparing a tailed beast bomb at him. 
In response, he prepared a Grand Ray Zero to counter the Tailed Beast Bomb. The two Jutsu hit with Naruto's Grand Ray Zero winning over their Tailed Beast Bomb. He walked towards them to end their pathetic lives, but before he did, a wadden cage came up with a chakra suppressing seal on it. Wood style. But how? Tsune doesn't have it. Is there another Senju I am not aware of? He thought and his dragon armor was getting suppressed. He quickly sealed his Narada and Gunbai before his chakra was completely suppressed. Mission successful, Lord Hokage. Izuna Chiha is captured. Said an Anbu who had a dog mask with markings. Excellent work, Tenzo. Anbu, escort him to the blood prison. Make sure he gets there, safely. Ordered Minato and the Anbu nodded before taking Naruto away. You didn't take his eyes or weapons, Minato. Asked Jiraiya and Minato nodded. Yes. He will need them if he will weaken the prison significantly. Said Minato. Fine then Minato, but don't expect me to help you if you get into trouble. Said Jiraiya and walked away to get treatment for his wounds. I'm sorry Naruto. Were Minato's thoughts as he saw his son being carried away and he winced at his son's angry face. Village hidden in the grass. In the tallest building in the village hidden in the grass sat a figure with pale silver hair, violet eyes and pale skin. He wore a white shirt with grey pants and a dark blue necktie. He wore black military boots and parts of his clothes had bits of advanced technology on them an. Steampunk. He wore a dark brown hotted trench coat with multiple stripes, Ab wore a red cape with a three-headed dragon with two tails and two wings. Sarah he called his younger sister assistant but no response. Sarah Blackfire, come here now where is the report? It's been a day already. Alright alright came a woman's voice as she walked into the room. She too had the silver hair, pale skin and violet eyes. She wore a long white skirt with a red corset. She wore knee-length brown military boots and had a blue rose on her hair which tied the hair forming a style similar to a ponytail. Sorry about that. She said in a foreign accent that the people of the continent have ever heard of. The report got updated. You may or may not like it depending on how you see it. After a few minutes, he put his glasses down. Is this accurate? He asked, hoping it wasn't. I'm afraid it is. Then, tell our men to be ready to break him out soon. We also intercepted seven women on one of the Achiha hideouts. Claim they're his subordinates. We tested them. They're legit. Good. The faster we break him out, the better. Tell mother we'll be back soon. On a demon. And Sarah left. And the now identified demon looked out the village and saw garrisons of his soldiers armed with their chakra rifles and the aircraft fighters and tanks, ready for deployment. Soon, we'll break you out and you will be reunited with your family, Big Brother Izuna. Blood Prison Part 2. Akuyuki, Karen Yuzumaki, Kintsuchi, Samui, Tamari, Kuritsuchi and Teaya were running through the forests of Fire Country at fast speeds to avoid the Chuninar Foundation Anbu from the leaf. When their master's shadow clone came and told them to run away from the village, they did as quickly as they could, killing the Chunin guarding the main gate of the village. Their plan was to regroup at one of the many abandoned Achiha clan hideouts in the world and plan on how to break their master out of the blood prison. Their destination was the nearest Achiha clan hideout in Fire Country AN. The hideout where Itachi and Sasuke fraud in canon and there, they'll plan ahead. How much longer till we're there? Asked Teaya, exhausted of the constant running. She wanted to reach the hideout fast to rescue her new master, and the distance looked like it wasn't getting shorter. Soon, Teaya chan Came the reply of her old friend from Sound, Kintsuchi. We'll arrive in 10 minutes, good. The faster we reach the damn base, we can go rescue our master from that fucking prison. Quiet said their leader, Haku, who was appointed by Naruto to be their leader since she was the first to be his slave. What is it? Leaf Nin. Asked Tamari, but Haku shook her head no. Some unknown people. I can tell they're not from here since Abusa and I have been traveling for years, doing dirty work before I found my purpose serving Lord Izuna. Whoever they are, they're not from the elemental nations. Said Haku and the girls leaned closer to see and they saw what Haku said was true. In front of them or below since there in the trees was a camp and at least four dozen men and two dozen women. The men had worn a green double-breasted trench coat with two gold circles on the wrists and black collars with two white stripes and a silver dragon on the collars. They wore baggy green pants with black boots and had helmets with spikes on top of them. They had a sort of weapon that they never saw before on the Mayan. Rifles that had tanto-like blades attached to the tip. The women had nearly similar clothing, except theirs was a darker shade of green and wore brown, knee-length boots, and their coats were much smaller in length, only waist level as opposed to the male's knee length. They had black helmets with a gas mask attached to an oxygen supply in the back and their belt held pouches for ammunition or grenades. What caught Haku's eyes were their banners which had a red background and a three-headed dragon with two wings and two tails. An unusual symbol for those in the east. She saw someone with medals on the left side of his coat coming towards them with four extra soldiers, possibly his guards to the group, towards another man. She saw he had a plank on him that could possibly signify his rank. 
The man was walking towards the group and he had a woman walking with him. Aku focused Chakra to her ears to listen in on their conversation, but found it near useless since they were speaking in a foreign language. Perhaps the woman could hop a full translated. There is no one there, Captain. The base had been abandoned for over a hundred years. Said the soldier, speaking in what Haku described as foreign and not of the elemental nations. That's too bad, Sergeant. He turned to the woman and spoke in their language. You told us Lord Ichiha would be here, where is he, Lord Ichiha? Could they be talking about my master? What would foreign people want my master? Haku thought as she listened closer. Apparently the foreign men were indeed looking for her master as they called him Lord Madara's descendant, but she wondered if they were friendly or foe. If friendly, they could join forces and rescue Naruto from the prison, but if they were foe, they would have to kill them now to avoid their master getting hurt. We have to find him soon men, gather around we're leaving back to grass to inform Lord Demon of our situation. His cousin, Lord Madara's blood is still unknown now. Said the captain and Haku and the girl's eyes widened in shock. Naruto had relatives still alive. Aku and the girls immediately dropped down from the trees, startling the troops who pointed their rifles at them and shouted for them to stand still, hands in the air or to lay down their weapons. Wait wait shouted Haku trying to defuse the situation. We're servants of Lord Izuna Che. The descendant of Madara Che. Wait put down your weapons put them down, shouted the captain and his men did but were still weary. He coughed a bit to get the sourness out of his throat. Is it true? You are servants of Lord Madara's descendant. He asked in their language and they nodded. Well, where is he? Imprisoned. He's been falsely accused of crimes he didn't commit by the Leaf Village and was subdued and shipped off to prison. She said, shocking the captain greatly. The captain was angry. How dare those low scum trash of the Leaf Village arrest Madara's descendant. My name is Captain Ernst Hedrich, and these are my troops. Are you the leader of this group, young lady? Haku nodded. Yes. My name is Hakuyuki, second of Lord Izuna's many soon-to-be brides. At that, the men had faces of envy, since the one they'll follow into battle had seven beautiful girls to be his wives, while the women looked at them in jealousy or anger. Well then, follow me. My men will bring you food and drinks. I'm sure it was a long journey so come on in and tell me more about Lord Madara's descendant. Asked the captain eagerly. Well, his name is Izuna Cheha, and he is a jonin, well former jonin anyways, of the village hidden in the leaves. More like village hidden in the traders. Anyways, why are you so interested in my master anyways? And who are these relatives you speak of, huh? She asked back. Well started the general as it was going to a super long explanation. And to those of the east, it would be a bit too much. It all started nearly 80 years ago when Lord Madara Cheha set sail and crossed what you easterners call the Sunset Sea. He arrived on the western continent, led prison, on a boat were eight men and a wadden cage, inside was Naruto who nearly puked and was severely seasick. He promised that he would get out of this and return to the Leaf and kill the elders, clan heads, the two Sanin and Minato for this act of betrayal. And especially Kishina for having the audacity to even think her two disgraces, Menma and Mido, were more worthy of the Sharingan, his bloodline, than himself. Maybe he'll spare Kishina so that he can be his personal chew toy he can torture all he wanted when he was stressed or simply bored. Perhaps throw her in the CRA Clan Restoration Act so that she can give birth to a new generation of Yuzumaki. But now, all his plans for revenge against the Leaf were to be put on hold, since he was in the blood prison, a castle so heavily guarded escape was thought to be impossible. He scoffed at that. Impossible to escape all right. If the seal on the cage didn't suppress his chakra, he could have turned the castle into rubble in an hour, maybe bring the dragons in for good measure. The boat docked on the shore, and four men grabbed the poles onto their shoulders and carried it to the main gate. He saw four more people besides him, must be new arrivals like me he thought, but his eyes were on the dark-skinned, white-haired girl whose chakra was high jonin level. Was she a captured Nukenin? All right listen up new arrivals bellowed a short fat man who walked forward, Lord Mui, the master of the castle, will address you, all right then. Said a well-dressed man in a red trench coat and a cape. Whatever you were in your former lives, the fact that you were sent here means that you are of no value to anyone. You have lost the faith of your village and your people, and you are considered a threat to the peace and security of your village. Henceforth, from now on, you are all worthless. He removed the seal on Wadden cage that held Naruto, destroying the cage and allowing him to stand. I'm sure you have heard the rumors about our little home. Well, let me tell you that they don't have to be true if you do everything as I say. He eyed all the prisoners and stopped at Naruto, who looked down on the ground. Look at me when I'm talking to you, no. Simply replied Naruto, not even bothering to look up. So you would rather look at my shoes than at me? Then, go ahead. He put his foot on Naruto's shackles, and Naruto fell to his knees. Naruto's facial expression didn't change, nor did his body language change. He wasn't a tiny bit intimidated by Mui's tactics. Interrogators from the leaf were much better than him. I know exactly who you are, Izuna Cheha, the dancing black dragon of the leaf. 
At hearing the name, the white-haired girl's eye widened but quickly compassed herself. You seem to have this false sense of domination in you, but don't worry, we'll fix you up in no time. Now look at me in the eye. He removed his foot, and Naruto stared at him with his Sharingan active. But Mui wasn't phased by the eyes of the Achiha, the eyes made for war. Isn't that better? You will do as I say and you won't have to pay the price. He walked back and faced all of the new arrivals. We of the Hidden Grass were tasked by the nations of the world to see that those sent here never return. Your personal circumstances are none of our concern. He thrusted his palm into Naruto's chest, where his palm ignited with fire. Higher style. Heavenly prison. Naruto wasn't phased by the pain induced by the fire seal. He had far worse done to him. That imprisonment technique is unique to my clan. It has been passed down through the generations and then to me. That seal is the reason why the grass was entrusted with you prisoners. With that seal, you can no longer mold your chakra. Naruto looked down to his body and saw the seal. He tried to feel his chakra activate his Sharingan, but to no avail. Mui was right in his statement. Damn fucking great. There are only two ways to leave this prison. One is if your villages have given you an official release paper. The second and by far the most common is if you die. Don't even bother thinking of escaping. If you get a certain distance away from me, the seal will activate and turn you to ashes. One more thing while we're at it, you may have heard that the seal is ineffective underwater, and that is true. But, the currents are deep and treacherous. You would drown before you can feel a little bit of your chakra. Said Mui and he walked away. Naruto and the new arrivals were dragged up the massive stone stairs of the castle. It was huge, bigger than any building in the leaf, but smaller than the secret Ichiha hideout spread out over the elemental nations. As they kept walking, the fat man decided to speak again and annoy Naruto with his voice once more. As you have heard from Lord Mui, any chance of you getting out alive after he's burned the technique into you is suicide. So, you might as well enjoy your stay here. Hey, who knows? It wouldn't be so bad after all. Said the man and the guards dragged them to the inspection area. I know it wouldn't be so bad, fat ass cause I'll soon get to use my chakra to control all of you, the guards and prisoners, as my slave army to destroy the leaf government for this betrayal thought Naruto darkly while being dragged. As they made their way in, the other prisoners decided to greet their new friends, to give them a warm welcome. Look wave at them boys let's give them a nice welcome, said a fat man who waved at the new arrivals. Boy fresh meat, welcome to hell, they look like a bunch of pussies. Hey give me the one with the spiky hair and the dark blue cloak. We'll give each other a nice time. Naruto.exe stopped working. Alright. First you will undergo a physical examination then you'll go to your cell, your new home from now and I'll be there to inspect you all personally. We will be doing a very thorough search and examine every inch of your body. Said the man and the guards proceeded to drop their shackles. Naruto and the rest were currently in the metal halls, sitting on the benches and waiting for their respective turns. One of the new arrivals turned to our main character and scooched near him. So, what are you in for? The man asked and Naruto simply stared at the man. The man backed away in fear. Too bad. Guess I'll never know. Me. I was given a mission and I messed up pretty badly. I was tasked to slaughter all the people in a nearby village. In a moment of weakness or something, I let this damn kid go. Maybe cause I took pity on him, and when the higher-ups found out about it, they weren't so happy, and there you have it. Apparently I was blamed for attempting to assassinate the rakage. Said Naruto, shocking the man. He might as well listen to their stories cause it would be damn boring. You tried to assassinate a cage. Asked the man, still in shock. Either the team before him was ridiculously powerful or just plain dumb. Is that so far from truth? I killed over 3,000 people in just a few months' time, among them a Jinchuriki, and even lasted a dance against a Sanin, twice. Simply said Naruto and zoomed out, ignoring all his surroundings and trying to focus gathering nature chakra, but stopped when the white-haired girl touched him. Naruto simply stared at her but didn't say a word. He wasn't the best at sensing people's emotions like an Uzumaki did, but from her face, he could see she was concerned. Did he know this girl from before? He didn't remember so he didn't understand why she was so concerned about him, someone she had never seen before. The guards called her for inspection, and he could resume his meditation. You spiky hair you're up shouted the guard, and he groaned in anger. He didn't have much of a choice so he went to the room. That undressed. Ordered the same fat man whose voice irritated Naruto to no end. Without much choice, he stripped down to his underwear while the guards checked his cloak, shirt, arm warmer, pants and boots. No weapons to be found, they reported, and that much was obvious to Naruto. He sealed all his weapons in the storage seals on his hands, the seals made to look like exotic tattoos. Now stand on one foot and jump on each foot one at a time. But this time, Naruto didn't comply. Oh. A feasty one eh? Well, we'll just have to beat it out of you. Said the fat man and took his baton while the other two did the same. 
Naruto dodged the first strike from the guard to his right and gave him a jaw-breaking elbow strike and kicked him in the balls with enough force to send him to the wall. He back-punched the left guard and the guard fell to his knees. He punched the fat man's baton with enough force to break it in half and kicked the left guard so hard he was unconscious. He grabbed the broken baton and pointed it to the fat man's forehead, drawing blood. Remember this, fat man. I can kill you in five different ways within the span of a blink. He said and grabbed his clothes and walked away. If you looked at the fat man closer, you will see something wet between his legs and he fainted out of fear. Elsewhere, in the secret base was a large statue with its mouth hanging open. It had a large cloth covering its eyes and had a monk-like outfit. On its large fingers were ten holographic figures on them. The holograms themselves had cloaks with red clouds on them. It's been quite some time since we've all gathered here. How long has it been? Asked a tall man with beady eyes. Indeed. Seven years since Arachimaru left in pursuit of his idiotic goals. Said a hunched back, short man. They were the Akatsuki, an organization made up of ten of the strongest S-rank missing men from the shinobi villages, except the Hidden Cloud Dodd. The organization itself served as a mercenary group for the hidden villages or other countries to do what their ninja didn't dare to do. Currently, they were discussing about Orochimaru having Sasuke in his possessions and Naruto being falsely imprisoned. So, Orochimaru has the Sharingan now. Isn't the brat your little brother Itachi? The one who charged at you with a lightning jutsu? Asked the silhouette of a man with shark-like features. Itachi made no emotional response, nor did he change his facial expression. His mind was elsewhere. He was glad Sasuke would get stronger but a bit angry that it was Orochimaru of all people, but currently, his mind was on Naruto. The other Ichiha, the great-grandson of Madara Ichiha, is currently in the blood prison. Said the silhouette of a half-black, half-white humanoid with a Venus flytrap-like thing on his body. Really? Why? Asked Itachi in his monotone voice, but had a bit of emotion, particularly concern and worry. Apparently he is blamed for the attempted assassination of the wreckage on peace talks between the leaf and the cloud. But, there never was a peace talk between the two villages in the first place. Replied Zetsu. Hearing this, Itachi was a bit angry at how the leaf handled Naruto. What of the hidden grass, Zetsu? Any new information to be found? Asked the one with the purple, rippled eyes. He was simply called Pain and the leader of the hidden rain. Due to the grass village's close proximity to the rain, he was concerned that the new government might invade his home. No. Whoever they are, they have too strict of a security and capable sensors. Getting in would be difficult. Replied Zetsu. Very well then. You will continue with your original tasks, gathering enough funds for the organization and information on the Jinchuriki. We will begin our true plans in two and a half years' time. Said the man and disappeared. The other members did as well, but Itachi had a train of thought running in his head. I know you are more than powerful enough to break out of a prison, even one such as the infamous blood prison, Naruto. I wonder why you haven't done it yet. Unless of course you have a plan behind this. Were Itachi's thoughts as he too disappeared from the hideout and back to his original body and mind. Though what Naruto, his surrogate younger brother he loved same as Sasuke, was planning he didn't know. Was Naruto planning on turning the prisoners there to his cause and raising an army to hunt him down? Or to kill the ones who imprisoned him? If it was the latter and he was going to return to the leaf with an army, he hoped he didn't kill all the people or turn into a dictator. But now, he would just have to prepare for the eventual confrontation with either Naruto or Sasuke. But first things first, the leaf didn't fully comply to his wishes. He wanted Sasuke and Naruto to be treated well, not like spoiled princes like the Yuzuka's children. Sasuke had an ego the size of the Hokage Monument and Minato imprisoned Naruto. He sacrificed his clan in order to avoid a civil war in the village and his wishes were ignored. He would get his little payback by revealing a bit of the leaf's dirty secrets. Not big ones only Danzo knew as he would most likely reveal the Ichiha clan's failed coup, but minor ones to cause distrust and some economic hardships for their treatment of his little brothers. Night, night had fallen over the blood prison, and all the prisoners there were sorted into their cells. The only light were those of the lamps or torches hung by the guards, and the inmates were dead asleep in their slumber, in the silence of the night sky and the flickering amber of the lamps. But Naruto wasn't asleep. He was in an unmoving, meditating position. He was as still as a statue, gathering as much nature chakra to use. Due to the seal on him, he had only a few minutes worth of time, since he wasn't collecting for long enough. He opened his eyes to reveal the Sharingan. He had gathered enough chakra to perform his jutsu. He flashed through hand signs and bit his thumb to draw blood. Summoning jutsu. He put his palm on the ground and a poof of smoke to reveal his trusty spy and friend, Laserbeak. Laserbeak tried to bark, but Naruto put his hand on his mouth to stop the sound. SHH. Quiet Laserbeak. Right now, I'm in prison and I need you to go scout out the castle for its dimensions, the number of inmates and guards positioned all around it, and buildings of key importance. Come back to me after you have the information written down. 
Got it. He asked and Laserbeak nodded. Naruto heard the sounds of guards coming near him. Quickly, transform into the jewel. And Laserbeak transformed into a jewel that wrapped around his neck. He made a clone that quickly lied down on the bed, put the blanket over him and feigned sleep. The original Naruto used a transformation and a Jinjutsu to hide himself and the guards came in. HMPH. Look at him, thinking he can have a good night's sleep on his first night here, as if he were some big shot. Said one of the men who then proceeded to blindfold him, gag his mouth and tie his arms and legs, while they carried the clone elsewhere. Naruto smirked and quietly came down to the floor. He made his way out. He would have needed to make a distraction for Laserbeak to gather the necessary information, but here was a chance better than what he planned. Underground, the guards brought Naruto to an underground laboratory strapped Naruto on the table, and besides him were Mui and the one who tied him up. The small ab had numerous circuits and vials near the table with strong cuffs to restrict Naruto's movements. Mui watched with his cold eyes, the young man who was the suspect for attempted assassination of the cage, though he wondered why the recent newspapers or radio didn't speak of one. The hotted man who took Naruto, whom he knew as Meroi, was complaining about how he was suffocating under his hood, and he looked at him with a stare, and the man cowered. Mui saw an irregularity on Naruto, and he had an idea as to why. He pulled out a kunai and stabbed Naruto, which silenced him. But the Naruto they were looking at poofed to reveal he was in fact a shadow clone. Meroi, you incompetent fool. Mui said and he walked out the laboratory to capture the Acha. Naruto climbed the walls and was walking on the rooftops when he suddenly got his clone's memories. Shit. He mentally cursed and knew his time before his eventual capture would be soon. Laserbeak, fly now. Find me when you get it. And Laserbeak transformed back into his dragon form and put up its invisible cloak and flew away. Whistles were heard and dogs came barking out as the guards with their flashes came flooding the grounds. Have you found him yet? No, sir. But the dogs will eventually have his scent. There he is said one of them and he pointed on the roof and everyone saw Naruto. Yes there's no choice now. Thought Naruto and he jumped down. He landed on the middle of three men and kicked the first one in the stomach with enough force to send him crashing to a wall. The other guard took out his baton and tried hitting Naruto, but Naruto grabbed his arm and pulled him down, kicking him in the chin and kicked the dog away. He punched the third guard in the stomach two times and kicked him away. Other guards ran towards him, intending to beat him into submission, but Naruto, despite his age, was much better at hand-to-hand -hand combat than them and proceeded to beat them all within an inch of their lives. He twisted the arm of one guard, he gave another a left whom and kicked him to two others and used another against a meat shield before throwing him away. One tried to stab him with a knife, but Naruto grabbed his arm and stabbed the knife into the guard's neck. Naruto removed the knife and threw it at another, killing him in an instant, and gave another charging guard a left hook before using him as a shield against another knife strike. He twisted another guard's neck and pushed one to the ground and punched him furiously until his face bled. Who's next? What? Don't tell me you're scared. Asked Naruto, but he felt a pain. Suddenly, it got worse in an instant and he fell to his knees. He saw Mui coming forward with more guards. Take him to solitude confinement. Ordered Mui, but some guards were hesitant. Lord Mui, but he killed a few of our. I can see that with my own eyes. But regardless, it is rules and regulations. Replied Mui though secretly, the higher-ups of his faction were allied with Danzo and his foundation, who ordered that Naruto was to be alive, no matter the costs. Though Mui didn't know why, he didn't question their orders and saw Naruto being carried away to solitary confinement. Next day, Naruto looked out at the window in his room, at the big, blue sea, the pelicans and other seabirds roaming and singing in the air, and the ocean waves crashing at the island shore. He took a step back as he heard a screeching noise. Laserbeak turned off its invisibility cloak and landed besides its summoner. Naruto smiled a little at his trusty spy and knelt down at Laserbeak's level. Do you have it? Laserbeak nodded to which Naruto's smile increased a bit and he petted Laserbeak on the head. Good. Now, give me the paper. Let me see. Laserbeak did as instructed and gave his summoner the paper containing the number of guards and inmates, important parts of the castle like the armory and barracks, the dimensions and size of the castle, along with something that surprised him and made him more proud of Laserbeak. Secret tunnels that led in and out of the castle. Excellent work Laserbeak. Go and give these to the girls. They'll need it if they're going to break me out of here. Ordered Naruto and Laserbeak barked and flew away. Naruto looked at Laserbeak flying away into the distance and smirked. The first phase of his plan, that is to gather information was complete. Next was to get that info to his slaves who would break him out of the prison and then phase 3, to use his Kodamatsukami on the prisoners and raise an army to take control of the leaf would begin soon. Blood Prison. Part 3. Naruto sat, cross-legged as in a meditating pose in his cell. Phase 2 of his plan was already underway. His slaves had told him in their message that they will be coming near the end of the week or probably sooner, along with new allies to help him. 
He didn't know who these new allies were and was a bit skeptical, but he didn't question it. Perhaps they were missing men that the girls recruited to serve him or maybe either Tamari or Kurutsuchi went back to their respective villages and convinced the cage of either one or two of the villages to break him out. Perhaps it was a minor village trying to win him over to their side or the new government in the grass. Many possibilities he simply didn't care about as long as he was free and he could get his revenge. A hidden mist was near the prison. Perhaps after using his Kodamatsukami on the prisoners he'll win the civil war in the favor of the rebels and he'll be the one in real power, while the rebel leader, the new Mizukage he'll put in the seat of power, will be his puppet. PSST. PSST hey he heard the noise of someone calling out to him from the window of his cell. He got up from his seat, breaking his concentration and looked out. If his chakra wasn't blocked, he would have burned the one who called him to ashes for this interruption. Hey. You there? Asked the voice again and Naruto got annoyed. Where else would I be? Naruto replied, with a bit of anger in his voice that betrayed the usual cold, sternness of his tongue. What do you want? He asked the stranger with warning in the voice that if his answer was a horrible one, he'll deal unimaginable amounts of pain on the man. And who are you, me? I'm no one, and nobody. As for why I'm here? Want to know how to break the seal on your chest? Defeat Mui. It's the only way. Said the stranger and Naruto raised his eyebrow. He had been studying his seal for the entire night. It was pretty complex for one of non Uzumaki design, but Naruto managed to figure out how to destroy it. He just needed the chakra, but he doubted it would be as easy as that. How can I trust the legitimacy of your words? He asked the stranger, but the stranger just chuckled. You don't. And with that, the stranger disappeared. Laserbeak. Naruto called his trusty spy who transformed back into its dragon form. Go back to girls and come back to me once you know when they'll break me out of here. Got it. He ordered and Laserbeak nodded and flew out of the window on the wall. Hidden grass. Aku, now dressed in a military uniform along with the other girls of her master's harem, looked at the silver-haired teen who claimed to be her master's relative with a skeptical look. You're telling me you are related to my master via his great-grandmother? Asked Haku and Demon nodded. Indeed. My great-grandmother, Raala was sisters with Visenya Blackfire who married great-granduncle Madara. Granny Visenya and Granduncle Tajima were never able to make it back to the western lands due to the great distance between the two landmasses, separated by ocean. He replied and Haku nodded, taking into account everything she just heard. I know it's a lot to take in, but trust me, knowing simply there's land beyond the sea is just the tip of the iceberg. Said Demon trying to make Haku less confused though he failed. Demon came the cry of his sister, Sarah. The leader of the cult has arrived and brother Izuna has sent his messenger once more, nodded, Sarah. And Demon walked out with Haku not too far behind to attend to Laserbeak. They walked out the room to meet the leader of the militant faction, and there in the hall, she was there. She had knee-length boots wearing a green outfit with blue flower patterns, a long left sleeve, and a short right one with a turtleneck that had fur around it. She had fair skin with a dark blue hair color and red lipstick. Ah, you must be Gurin. Leader of my great granulee's cult. My name is Demon Blackfire. Said Demon, taking his hand out to greet her, but she bowed instead. Pleasure to meet you, Demon Blackfire. She got up and was a bit confused by the hand sticking out. Oh, sorry. We in the West greet each other by shaking hands, I see. She said and she took the handshake. She noticed the girl besides him with clearly Eastern features. Who are you? I can tell you're an Easterner like me. My name is Hakuyuki. Loyal servant of Lord Izuna. I don't remember seeing you before. That's because Lord Izuna personally recruited me. She replied, shocking Gurin greatly. Really then, tell me what's his favorite color, food and what he likes. Gurin asked but quickly compassed herself. I'm sorry, it's just I want to meet Lord Izuna so badly. It's my duty as the leader of the faction. Well, for starters, his. Excuse me ladies demon interrupted them in their conversation. Dot dot but we have plans and preparations needed to be done. You know, like breaking my cousin out. Fine. The two said irritatedly and walked away. Gurin followed Haku to meet the other girls and to send a message to Naruto via Laserbeak. Night. Naruto didn't sleep in his cell, but rather looked out at the night sky and the ocean. The ships that sailed to and fro in the salty waters of the misty sea. He looked at the large fish in the seas, the sharks, dolphins, whales and large sea creatures like scales of a crocodile that hunt in the night sky. He looked above at the night sky and of the countless stars in the sky. A truly amazing sight to see. The stars and those above were always a fascination to him. How he wished he could explore the stars, as a sailor sails the seas, he too wished he could sail the black ocean of the night sky. But sadly, such means were impossible for him, but he could dream in his sleep. He got back to his bed and tried to sleep, but just two or so minutes in, he heard the noise of his door opening and got up. He was surprised to find it was the silver-haired girl who was a new arrival like him. Who are you and what do you want with me? 
he asked, startling her and after compassing herself, she quickly knelt down in front of him, confusing Naruto. He had never met this girl before, nor did he know her by name or in a letter, letters that contained people his brother knew personally, who could be of help in case he needed it, but this girl, he didn't know why. I'm sorry, Lord Izuna. Please forgive my intrusion in this late hour. Said the girl and fear ran in a submissive tone, making Naruto more confused than before, since he had never recounted using his brother's power on the silver-haired girl before. Who are you and why do you address me as such and with great fear and respect? He asked, wanting to know what the fuck was going on here. My name is Raizetsu, Lord Izuna. Your faithful servant and soldier. She replied making Naruto even more confused than he thought he could be. What? He managed to let out in a low tone, confusion all over him. What do you mean faithful servant and soldier? I'm sorry, my lord, perhaps I should have explained further. I am one of many people of the Speculum Luni, a group founded by your ancestor, Lord Madara Ichiha as a militant faction that would end the corruption and hate of the ninja world. I am but one of many who were trained for this purpose, and you are my master since you are of Lord Madara's blood. Now that was surprising for Naruto. His great-grandfather founded a military cult. He could use this to his advantage as he had an unknown number of potentially powerful people brainwashed to follow his orders without question. Wait a minute, if you and the group were meant to follow me and his descendants, why didn't your group try to reach my mother or get me earlier? He asked as this popped up in his mind and he wanted to know why. Because, my lord, the group was founded by those Lord Madara brought from the western lands and by his son, your grandfather, Tajima Che. Our group wasn't big enough to be led by Lady Kiyomi, but we have enough soldiers to finally be under your command. She replied and Naruto nodded his head in understanding. How many people are there in this little cult of mine? How powerful are its members and who is the leader? There are 7,000 soldiers, all Jonin and Anbu level ninja, and our leader, and your most faithful follower is a woman named Gurin. She has a unique bloodline called Crystal Release, which allows her to control Crystal, and our group is located in Demon Country, currently as a mercenary group protecting the priestess of the country. 7,000. All Jonin and Anbu level. This is much better than I expected. You told me that the cult was founded by those my ancestor brought from the western lands. So, the rumors of lands beyond the Sunset Sea were true after all. He said with a bit of shock. All the talk of a western continent past the sea to the west were true after all. Well, you still haven't answered my question, why are you here? You didn't simply come here to tell me all that, right? Yes, my lord, I didn't. The reason I came here was because I wanted to tell you in a few days time, the Speculum Looney will be coming here to save you from this prison and destroy the Box of Paradise. Box of Paradise? He asked, with a frown as he was confused at the name. Yes my lord. A box that we are currently unaware of but know it is a weapon of mass destruction that the ousted government of the hidden grass will be using to take over the world. Um, can't let that happen. A box such as that is dangerous in the hands of those in the leaf. Heavens know what Danzo or Kashina will do with it. I suppose, I will destroy it once my chakra is fully restored. Now then, my faithful servant Raizetsu, go back to your cell. Can't have you be missing and causing trouble. He ordered and she left his cell. Naruto stared at the seas once more. At the direction of the Sunset Sea that his great-grandfather crossed and explored lands never recorded in the history books of the East. In a few days' time, the cult that he just learned about that were loyal only to him would break him out. With this discovery in mind, he wondered if the allies the girls wrote about were in fact the Speculum Looney or not. Oh well, he'll just have to wait till the time comes and see for himself. Next day, the guards had unlocked his door and told Naruto his time was up and he was to be in the cafeteria for breakfast. Walking down, Naruto didn't talk much to anyone, but many were whispering about him and how he killed several guards all by himself. Many avoided him to not become one of his next kills. Some even heard of what he did in Wave, T, the failed invasion, Spring, and how he failed to avoid being captured by the Leaf, but killed hundreds of civilians and several Chunin and Anbu. Naruto walked into the prison's cafeteria where his fellow inmates were eating food of mediocre taste and wasn't even the least bit appeasing to him in the slightest. Though the cook did give him more bread and soup, probably out of fear, but who cares what they think. All eyes were fixed on Naruto, but he could care less. He saw some were too big to be considered human, but genetic mutation was pretty common in the ninja world, so no surprise there. Some too skinny, probably from lack of proper nutrients or exercise, while some looked normal like everyday people. Naruto saw some of the prisoners ate ramen, and though he wasn't a big fan of the food, at least there was something of fine quality to eat. His peace and quiet were interrupted by a man whose chakra he recognized as the one who kidnapped his clone. But he could care less about that. Hey, name's Meroi. How are you? Said the man, trying to start a conversation with the Acha. Get away from me. You're not my type. Simply replied Naruto, but the man just smiled. You know, you're quite the celebrity around here. 
tried to escape on your first day and killing several guards with ease. Is that so? Naruto simply replied in a bored voice. Yeah. You've given hope back to the people. Many started to think Mui is this invincible guy and the prison couldn't be escaped out of, but you put hope back into many people after that little stunt you pulled back, so why should I care? People are sheep who listen to words as if it was those of a god and cattle for following them blindly. He merely replied and those in the back who heard him call them sheep and cattle were quite angry. Naruto didn't care for these people. They were only meant to be cannon fodder till he took control of the mist village. They were probably mediocre in the skills department due to lack of nutrition. Meat shields meant to take the blow and those who survived would be just that again till he killed Itachi and took control of the leaf. But the discovery of the cult, he could care less if some died. Did this little brat just call us sheep? Asked a tall built man. Yeah. Let's show him who is sheep. Three prisoners moved out of their seats to beat Naruto into submission. Sheep huh? Apologize, brat, and we might just spare you. Said one of the three, and he spit it on Naruto's tray. Naruto, in anger, lifted his tray and smacked the man with it. The other tried to grab him, but he twisted his arm and broke his ribsage with a backhanded strike. He punched the tall guy in the stomach and punched him in the face, shattering his skull. Anyone else want to have a dance with me? He asked around and everybody shook their heads no. Good. Never interrupt a man's food, low life. He said and kicked the one who spat on his food in the face, shattering his jaw. Naruto saw the tall guy try to escape, but he grabbed him by the neck and slammed his face on the table, breaking it in half, and broke the last man's leg by stepping on it. The man's scream echoed through the cafeteria, and Naruto punched the man in the gut and throwing him in the garbage can and walking away. That kid is a monster. Said one of the prisoners as he saw everything that transpired with his own eyes. The level of brutality and sadism in the teen. Don't feel bad for the mateys. They were in here for raping and pillaging an entire village. Said Maroi who discreetly moved away from the table as the fighting began. The Achiha kid is worth far more than any scum. Raizetsu in the women's quarter was shocked to see her master defeat three people without chakra without much difficulty. Perhaps the rumors and his status in the bingo book were true after all. The guards came to carry the three men away, but found that only one survived though had a fractured jaw. The taller of the three died by having his skull shatter upon impact with the table, and the third one had his heart stopped beating by the punch delivered onto him. The three always talked about how they'll get out of the prison one day. It seems they got their wish. Well, at least two of them since the guards carried a winded man and two body bags. Open fields. At the open fields of the prison sat Naruto in solitude. Many giving him space if they were to survive a beating from him. Some of the women in the prison tried seducing him for either protection or a means to escape, but Naruto simply ignored them. Something hit him in the head and the little pebble that hit him landed on the ground. He looked up and saw it was Laserbeak. He got up and walked over the wall, grabbing Laserbeak in his necklace form and walked over to a wall to read the message. It read breakout happening in 1.30 am. He looked at the clock and saw it was 12.45 pm. 13 hours left till his freedom. He heard a noise near his position and turned around to see Raizetsu. Tonight, we'll be free. He said to the girl, who was a bit confused. Tonight, my lord, yes. At 1.30 am tonight, my allies will come to break us free from this prison, Raizetsu. If you don't mind me asking, my lord, how did you know this? He said and pulled out his necklace which transformed into a dragon. His name is Laserbeak. My trusty friend and spy. He's been keeping contact with my friends and sending messages here and there. The last message reads that an invasion will take place at 1.30 am. Tell me, have you found the box's location yet? Oh yes, I did. It's underneath us in a secret room below the ground. Only way to enter is by going in Mui's office. Um, I kill Mui, the seal on us will be destroyed with him. Better tell the invading force not to target the office then. If you don't mind me asking, Lord Izuna, how will you do it? I have a shadow clone in the solitary confinement gathering as much nature energy as possible. Once it's done, I'll kill Mui, then destroy the box. Night. It was five minutes till the invasion would begin. Naruto feigned sleep in his cell and not a few seconds later, guards came to gag him and tied him up. As a safety precaution, they gave him a powerful punch to his rib and didn't become smoke. Proving he was indeed the real Naruto and not a clone. Yeah, it's him alright. Let's go. Said one of the guards and the other replied aye, and they took Naruto away. The guards walked past the main building and into Mui's office. There, they activated the hidden switch to the underground laboratory and walked down the stairs. There, they strapped him down, and five other individuals appeared with four of them wearing animal masks. Good work, Mui. Said one of the mask individuals. Now we can begin taking the Achiha's chakra, yes. Now the flower faction will rule the world and restore the grass to its rightful glory. Said another one. Outside, a metallic warship of unknown design AN. WW2 Bismarck ship is a model dock near the island. 
The ship sent out a few ninja in their ranks, and they went outside the ship to kill the guard stationed on the walls and watch towers. Soldiers were preparing to storm the island and the castle once the signal was given. Is it time yet? Asked Haku on board the bridge of the ship, staring at Demon as he looked at the island. Soon. Very soon. Once the signal is given, we'll break my cousin out of there. Replied Demon, staring at the island without blinking. You better be good on your promise, Demon. If anything happens to Lord Izuna, I'm putting you in a crystal prison. Came Gurin's voice. Then, three flashes of red light and a flash of blue. That was the signal. Fire ordered Demon on the comms, and the gun pointed towards the armory and then. Boom. Oh now take the island, ordered Demon through the radio as he unsheathed his broadsword and went to join the invading army. Shall we? Asked Gurin and Haku nodded. The militant cult of Madara too went to join the party. Soon, the gates were breached, rifles shot and bombs exploded, guards massacred and prisoners rounded up. The ship fired once more and the walls exploded, waking the last sleeping inmates in the prison. Boom, what was that? Questioned one of them and Naruto smirked. Your demise. He simply said and he transformed into his dragon armor. The transformation of which caused a burst of chakra and everyone fell back. He broke free of his restraints and pierced two of the four animal-masked individuals with his wings. He killed the two guards via Ciro, and his tail pierced the third masked person through the back and threw him away. The fourth person tried running away, but Naruto caught him and then proceeded to rip him in half. He walked towards Mui who bumped his head on one of the equipment, and his head was bleeding a little. Mui was crawling towards a button and managed to hit it, pressing the alarm which alerted the grass nin loyal to the ousted party. Activating his Sharingan, he muttered Jinjutsu Sharingan and placed Mui under his control. Good. Now, release the heavenly prison seal on me and everyone on this island. Mui complied and performed the necessary hand signs, and the seal was gone. Thank you for your cooperation. Naruto said and decapitated Mui. He saw ten grass nin come towards the room. He made a horse sign and heaped in large amounts of chakra fire style. Majestic destroyer flame. And burned the guards to ashes. He saw the box and wasn't really impressed at the box in general. He drew blood on his fingers and blue chakra formed on his hands. Ran Ray Siro. He muttered and fired at the box. Boom. The roof above was destroyed, and he used Fujin to clear the smoke and looked at the box. It received some damage but not too much. Only a few scratches here and there and the part where the Ciro impacted had a hole of sword. So, it isn't that it is indestructible like my Narada or Kusanagi, but just hasn't met enough destructive force yet. Oh well. He activated his Susanoo and bombarded the box with Yasaka Magatama beads or multiple sword swings, and finally a Susanoo Gran Ray Ciro, and finally, the box was destroyed. Not really destroyed but probably unrecognizable now in case those of the Leaf or other villages try to use its power, whatever it may be. Naruto made hand signs fast, biting his thumb to draw blood, then he slammed it onto the ground. Summoning. Lernian Hydra and the Hydra appeared before him. He got atop the head and exited the tower. Lord Izuna, why have you summoned me to destroy, Hydra? Kill all those with the scent of the prison's guards. He ordered and Hydra smelled the scent and with Naruto's guidance, killed the guards but spared the unknown ninja and those with strange clothing. On, it was still early in the morning. About 5 am and the sun was starting to shine. The walls of the famed impenetrable blood prison were destroyed and the corpses of the guards that once patrolled the castle were piled up in the fields, ready to be burned. The prisoners were sorted into groups and their ultimate fate, whether they should join Naruto's forces or not, was to be decided. Soldiers cleared all the secrets in Mui's office and were interrogating the former higher-ups of the grass village for information and then execute them. Where is he? Where is Lord Izuna? Asked Gurin to her trusted friend and surrogate sister, Rai Zetsu. He's fine, Gurin. Just injured a bit, but he'll come around. Rai Zetsu replied as she was holding on to a new Uchiha war cloak. Naruto was currently in medical care and he lost his clothes in the battle. So, she brought a new one for him. Good. The faster I can see my cousin, the better replied Demon as he appeared alongside his cousin's little harem, and he would be lying if he said he wasn't jealous. After a few minutes, a shirtless Naruto walked towards the group, escorted by two soldiers. Female soldiers and Gurin, who saw the sight blushed at that. Naruto already had a ten pack, and he walked past the rubble to the group. My, my he said, eyeing every one of the group, and Gurin blushed further at the face of Naruto on her. Dot dot what a big group we have here. You, the bluenet, you must be Gurin, I presume, yes, Lord Izuna. It's good to finally meet you in person. She said, still with a blush. And you are? He asked the silver-haired teen whose face was not what he normally saw. My name is Demon Blackfire, cousin. He said, fidgeting a bit under his cousin's cold glare. The Sharingan active didn't help at all. Blackfire? Like in Visenya Blackfire? My great-grandmother? Why yes, so, you are from the western lands beyond the Sunset Sea. Indeed. 
The reason why we came here, cousin, is to not only break you free and reunite with your family, but to also help House Blackfire rule the Western Lands. Demon said, changing his tone from nervous to serious. Rule the Western Lands, yes. Great granduncle Madara helped House Blackfire attain status as a great house, but the Western Lands are divided. He had beaten the other houses and countries into submission, but after his death, the houses started warring against each other. Only you can help us in our goal of unifying the West under one rule. Said Demon and tried to kneel to convince his cousin, but Naruto stopped him. What are you doing, Demon? Get up. Family don't bow to another relative. I will help but first, we do things my way, and you will help me accomplish my goals first. You got it, cousin. Demon replied and Naruto smirked a bit. He took the war cloak and wore an ad in style in season 4. First, prepare all the men you have for a long journey. We will start by taking control of the Hidden Mist, then a few more key locations, and then we can conquer the Western Lands. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.